Now, can we actually figure out the nickel content in our um, high carbon steels? Obviously, most of you probably figured it out by now. Yes, we can. We just got to pre etch our materials. Now, I don't know why nobody actually talks about this because this is a no brainer and it should be good advice, sound advice to save yourself tons and tons of work. There's nothing worse than basically making up your billet, working it down, forge welding everything, turning it into a, a lovely item, and then ending up having a pattern that is pretty undetermined because there's no kind of contrast whatsoever in there. And basically, in order to tell if there's nickel in there, the nickel actually, of course, makes the piece, it doesn't etch as, as strongly, so the metal itself stays very shiny. And then all the other metals kind of turn into a darker uh, color. The least nickel there is in there, the darker the etch will become. And that's how you get your contrast. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut a little piece of each off, and then we're going to etch it, put it into the etching for the same amount of time, and then we'll be able to compare and then say, yes, this mystery steel is actually useful. No, this mystery steel is a waste of time. Yeah, this stuff is way thinner. Now I'm going to find a way of remembering what is what, obviously. Uh, this one with a little the little bend on it is the one from the metal saw bandsaw blade. Put that one there. The wood saw blade is very obvious because it's got larger teeth, but the carpenter saw blade and the metal wood saw blade, uh, the metal bandsaw blade, sorry, has very similar teeth. Okay, I realized I probably need a control, one or two controls. So we have here, all of these of course, blades, saw blades, and maybe the, maybe the material is just so similar that we don't have anything to contrast it to. So I've decided to use a spanner that I've used before in that bicycle little uh, hatchet that I made, Damascus. Um, so I know how this behaves when it's edged. And I have this piece of leaf spring, I'm going to cut a piece off of both of these. And then we should have enough contrast to be able to tell um, what edges at what rate. Okay, so I have the pieces in there. Um, the shiny surface is actually facing upwards. And this is what I actually noticed, which is really strange. As it was coming up to the boil, which only took about two minutes, the actual uh, wood mill bandsaw blade started reacting first, then the leaf spring, then the tool steel from the spanner, then the actual um, the, uh, bandsaw blade, the metal cutting one, came next, and last but not least uh, was the actual carpenter saw. Now they're all reacting at this point, and it was only within like seconds of each other that it started. So if that means anything, I don't know. But I just thought I'd, I'd say that as well, because that's what I noticed. Now in about 10, 20 minutes time, we'll take the pieces out, clean them up, and then we'll see if there's any contrast. Um, yeah, and it'd just be a great way to find out what pieces of metal would actually look good together. Okay, before we get into cleaning this, the, at this point I should really mention as well carbon and how that affects the pattern or the etching and basically the higher the carbon content the more uh, the darker the steel becomes that's what I understand from reading online lots of people say that that's a fact so I'm gonna take that as a fact and basically the spark pattern of four of them were exactly pretty much 90% the same very slight differences and the only one which was totally different was the carpenter's handsaw blade. Obviously there is carbon in the handsaw blade as well, 
but because of the different alloys in there um, that can actually affect the spark pattern as well. It wasn't a basic, a simple steel. It kind of probably tells us, and I'm a novice here, okay, but this probably tells us that that's a more complex steel with more alloys added. So what does this all mean? Well, basically, if one of these steels is way shinier than the rest, then that has nickel in it because that creates that kind of shiny effect. So, yeah, let's start scrubbing. And I'm going to just scrub a little bit on all of them because I've got to be really quick here. It looks more promising. a little one. This won't affect it anymore anyway because the vinegar itself is now cool. Mm -hmm. Now we're having rain and it never picks up on the camera but I have to make this quick. Um, basically as you can see we are having quite a contrast between these pieces here and what that tells me is this blade here which is the wood mill blade this is the leaf spring this is the carpenter's blade this is the metal cutting uh, bandsaw blade so bandsaw blade bandsaw blade and we have a uh, spanner there it's telling me that this one would be the best to have as a contrast to something like 15 and 20 or even this piece here, if I had enough um, of that to actually draw it into that shape and to create enough layers to make Damascus or pattern welded steel. But I don't, so, you know, that's just good to know that we have steel that can actually get that bright. Now, I have had these two before, so I have experience with them. Does it actually, now, this one is, doesn't harden as much as this leaf spring. Does it mean that there's less carbon in this? I don't know. But it's interesting that this is way brighter. It, I suspect it may have nickel in it, but I don't really know. But this test is more about, you know, like, I know the title says nickel in it, but it's also more about just um, contrast, really. So yeah, that's basically it. Now you, you're noticing that some of these steels are rusting up faster than the others. You can see that actually on the paper nicely, thanks to the rain. And as part of this experiment, I want to just leave this and see which steels will, will actually rust up faster, because that's the big kind of enemy to Damascus steel is, um, yeah, oxidization. And it would pay actually to know which steel to use based on rust resistance as well because of course we're working with scrap steel unknown steel now it's two days later and basically all steels obviously will rust as you know um, even stainless steel if you leave it out there long enough will of course rust as well so when you have Damascus there's a bit of a trade-off if you want that nice pattern what you're gonna have to do is you have to maintain the kind of steel obviously way better for those of you who don't know you have to clean off the the steel after you use the, the tool, whatever it is, and then you let it dry and then you put some, some kind of wax on it to protect it. And keeping it dry is of course a good thing as well. So the other thing, um, this test is really good because if you leave a piece in the field somewhere, you don't know how long it's been out there and it could have been out there longer than other pieces so this kind of gives you an idea of the alloys in there that prevent um, this oxidization. So I think this is actually not a bad test to do as well. This is the least amount of rust. You can see rust around it. That's from where I didn't clean it, the underside basically, and it's just seeping into the paper. Uh, this is the second uh, least amount of rust. This one is the worst. I don't know if the camera is showing it, it's kind of difficult. Um, and then these two are basically um, somewhere in between. So, that's uh, I think it's just another little nifty test to, to know. 
I mean, if I had something, this was really bright, this, these two pieces together would have been really cool. Okay, one last little experiment. I know the video is getting a bit long, but I'm just going to put this in there just for another bit of contrast. Basically, this is the piece that's got the darkest, second most uh, rust resistance. And this is a larger bandsaw blade, wood cutting bandsaw blade that I have as well. And I wanted to test that as well. And that just maybe, because I don't know, to me they seem like similar metals, materials, at least with the spark. Uh, this cuts exactly like this one, but you just never know. So let's just give it a try. Okay, so this is basically the results. As you can see, we have no difference. And that is in itself also a result which can be useful to know. Now I know I have two materials that, so more material that is on the dark spectrum of the scale. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that, oh yeah, by the way, that just shows as well that not all bandsaw blades have some nickel in them. That doesn't mean that they don't, it just means that these two didn't. Um, and maybe a lot of them do, but this these two definitely didn't. Um, one thing is that I just wanted to mention is that I'm not basing this rustability test off just the the kind of test you just saw the two days. I'm also looking at it because when you put it in the acid, what will happen is there's a bit of rust. You can probably just see it there that comes up straight away. Maybe it's to do with how it reacts with the vinegar. And in any case, um, from that I can also tell you know, which one rusts the fastest, which one oxidizes the fastest. And these two are, this one is a little bit more than this one, but roughly the same. So from that I can also just, it's just gleaming stuff out of it. It's not really highly scientific, but it gets me a bit closer to understanding the steels, the scrap steels that we have. And I do think this is a good test, so do give it a try. It doesn't take that long. If you prepare it well, you can do like 20 pieces at a time if you want. Just bearing in mind, you put everything in the same same time and you should be okay. Okay, that's it. Concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching. And yeah, might see you in the next one.